What's up, everybody? This is Chris. This is my channel, Barn on 11970. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch my video. And after a little bit of motivation today, I decided to make a video when actually I didn't think I had anything to say. So let's get on with it. Um, one of the things that I actually have been thinking about recently, because I've had a lot of videos that I've talked about, especially recently, on the fact of the way we are controlled is they've basically taken our abilities, and it's our own faults and our own responsibilities, but through their lies, we've they've basically taken our ability to research and trust our inner truth. In other words, trust our instincts, believe in ourselves, trust our word. We end up going elsewhere for things, and we turn it from truth, our own truth, because what's my truth may not be the truth for someone else, but taking a truth and turning it into a belief system. Because you always have to search for a belief. And whether you believe in something or not believe something, you're going outside your own ability for yourself to figure things out or believe yourself of what you know. And there's a lot of people that profit off of this. There are plenty of people out there who will say, well, if you want the truth for this information, buy my book or buy my DVD or pay for this pay website and we'll give you all the answers that will save you. Now, there is some good with these things that are actually having other people help us with things. Like, for example, this shirt. This shirt is more convenient and probably more economically viable for me to purchase from somebody else who made it than for me to go out and buy the materials, then learn how to make it, then get the patience and the time to be able to make it, and then assuming I could make it even remotely close to what this is, some things are convenient. So I'm not going to sit here and say everything's evil, you have to do everything yourself. That's obviously never going to be the reality. But what I've noticed is we've become a society that is so dependent on almost every aspect of our lives on someone else that it's very easy for us to lose our capability of doing things. And we rely on others to take care of us. Like I'll give you a prime example. Look at how many Americans are on the welfare system. You're talking over 35 to 40 million Americans that's roughly around 10% of the population that is on a welfare program. Now, there are plenty of people that need it. Now, I'm talking about, like, for example, single parents that have children and they're trying to better their lives by either going back to school to get an education or they're working to feed their family and they have nobody around. Yes, those are the type of people that need it. You're talking about elderly people. You're talking about people that are physically or mentally handicapped, that are either physically or mentally incapable of working. Yes, or there are people who got into accidents and break their leg and all of a sudden they can't work and they need something to keep them going while they heal. These are the people that actually need this assistance. But I'm talking about the people who take advantage of it. And let me tell you something, because I've told people plenty of times in past videos, there is a gentleman that I, it's not family, but I consider him family because he's been a friend of the family since around, 19, around 1981. And this guy, he had a stroke. He drank too much, and one day it caught up with him. He, he had a stroke and lost the ability for the, uh, the right side of his body. He can't talk straight. He can't function on his own. He can't write because his hand is locked up. Sometimes when he tries to talk, all of a sudden his brain just locks up and he gets frustrated. And his family abandoned him. This man is about 57, 58 years old had a stroke. The guy is about 500 pounds. He's depressed. But somebody like that, they need government assistance because he could barely stand. Because you know how hard it is to walk when especially when your dominant side is your right hand and all of a sudden you lose function of it to the point where your brain can't even send signals sometimes to speak. So people like that need that. And I have always tried to do the right thing in my life. And when his family abandoned him and he had nowhere to go, I had an upstairs room that no one was using. I let him stay in it. And I go food shopping for him. I take him to get his medicine when he needs it. I make sure that if he has a problem with his welfare check, that I go and bring him to the place instead of him having to spend money on a taxi and somebody or waiting on somebody else that may not show up for him. 
And I've been at these welfare offices. I make him sit down and I wait on line for him. And I see some of these people online collecting money from the government. And they have their Air Jordans. They have their fancy cell phones. They brag about how much money they're making. So I'm talking about the people who take advantage of the system. But it backfires on them because what happens is we become so dependent on everyone else that we lose our ability either through laziness or just the fact that it's like I don't want to work because I can understand some people's concept of this where they could say, okay, I could work 40 to 50 hours a week at some dead-end job and make the minimum wage, which gives me after taxes barely enough to be able to live in uh, my uh, some parent's basement apartment and barely have enough money to survive, or I can sit at home playing video games and collecting a welfare check and not having to work. It's almost a no-brainer. But in the way, that is a form of control because then instead of becoming an independent person who works on their own and has the capability of doing their own things for themselves, they now have to rely on an outside source. And if you know anything about the welfare system, and I've had to deal with this several times with helping uh, this gentleman from dealing with all this stuff, they lower it all the time. They take away benefits all the time. They do it without anything more than an apology. And what happens if one day they decide, well, you know, you have normally you have well, first you had food stamps and then they gave you an EBT card. And what happens if they say, well, you know what? We're making a new law next year that if you want to get the welfare that we offer you, well, you're going to have to implant a little microchip. But don't worry about that. It's going to be very convenient because it'll be under your skin so no one can steal it. And if you ever have a, a sickness or an accident where you're passed out and incapable of speaking or you, you can't talk or whatever, well, we could just read all your information off this and it'll save your life and it's going to follow you. So if you have a friend or family that has Alzheimer's and they forget where they are, well, we could track it and we'll be able to find wherever they are and it'll keep your family safe. And you'll think, wow, that's convenient. You know how many people are going to line up for it? And they say, oh, well, all you have to do is you take this this little chip that we're going to plant in there. It's not going to hurt. It's going to be tiny. You won't even notice it's there. And then when you go to the supermarket, all you do is swipe it. And now you got all the food you need. Well, what? Are, how many people are going to line up for that? Millions. And what if they decide all of a sudden to shut that off? And what if that's the only means that you have to be able to get food? How many people grow their own food anymore? How many people make their own stuff? We do less and less. The more technologically advanced we get, the more dependent we are on someone else being able to do the right thing. And that's why we can complain about genetically modified foods, but the solution to that is making your own food. There are people willing to buy this garbage because it's more convenient, even though it's full of toxins, chemicals, poisons. Things that hurt us, not poisons enough to kill you, even though people can die from it, but enough to make you sick. Because when you're young, they want to take the advantage of your youth, your ability to work, your ability to earn them income so they can play golf the rest of their lives. It doesn't affect you until you start getting older. That's when you get the, tan the cancers and the tumors and the ulcers and the spinal problems and the muscle problems and the bone and hip problems. Because at that point, you're rendered useless. They don't really care if you live or die because they've already gotten as much energy out of you as they can. But yet we allow this to happen because instead of looking into ourselves and doing things as much as we can for ourselves, of course, you can't do everything. But the more we give away to someone else, the less control we have and the more control they have. And it's done by design. It's done through the eyes of convenience. And so many of us get to the point where instead of searching our own hearts and believing in our own instincts, that we always feel like, oh, well, I feel down and depressed or insecure and I need to go elsewhere for somebody else to motivate me or I need to talk to somebody else to make me feel better or I need to pay for a psychologist so he can give me the answers. Nobody knows you better than you. But they've made everyone think, well, in religion, if you have a crisis, you get on your knees and you pray for whatever God you believe in to come and answer your prayers. Or if it's in the government, if you have a problem with what's going on in the world, we will have you vote for your next politician that's corrupt. Because how many of these co politicians are honest? I mean, I'll, I'll give you a prime example. And if any of you have Hulu, um, it's, is it Netflix? No, it's actually Hulu because Netflix, there's no advertisements, but there's advertisements on Hulu. And if you've watched Hulu recently, you've probably seen a, um, a commercial that they have about Tim Bishop. 
He's a congressman. I didn't know him until I saw this. And they're talking like they usually do. They do the smash campaign. And they said that Tim Bishop was nominated by the Congress to be the most criminal or the most corrupt of all congressmen. But yet they allow him to stay a congressman. You see how how it works? And we're so into relying on others that we lose our own independence and we get to the point where we feel so uncomfortable with trusting in ourselves and believing in ourselves and listening to ourselves. And it's all about truth, our individual truth. My truth is different than your truth and your truth is different than somebody else's truth. But that does not mean it's not true because if it's true for you, who cares what anybody else thinks? And that's what some of the haters that make all these stupid and false accusations about me don't seem to understand. They hate me because they don't agree with my truth. But again, like for example, some people will say, well, don't you sell stuff? I sure do. I have an Oregon and organic website where I actually, for my Oregon pyramids, I actually go out and buy all the materials. I spend hours of my time creating these things to make them look beautiful. And if I tell people all the time to research about crystals and stones, because if you know anything about crystals, they actually do generate energy. If you look at the first radios, they actually took a quartz crystal, connected a copper wire to it, and it created an electric ability to create a radio. Look at your computers. They're made of silicone. Silicone is crushed quartz. But you never see me make a video saying, oh, well, you know, if you want to get my Oregon pyramids, they're going to save your life. And if you don't want the world to end tomorrow, you need to buy one of my Oregon pyramids. Otherwise, you're going to die. Here's how to get it. No, I offer something for sale that if people want to get it, they can go there and purchase. There's no gun to their head. There's no fear that makes them go. I say, here's something I make. This is what it does. Research it yourself. And if you feel this is something that's you're resonating with. Here's the opportunity, but here's the thing. If you go on my channel, on the front page in the search engine, and you type in Oregon Pyramids, you will see a video that I've made that teaches people how to make the very thing that I sell. I don't offer a book that you could buy. I don't offer a DVD that you have to purchase or a link that you have to pay for to get that information. I say, here you go. I made a video free for people who wanted to make it themselves to be able to do so. Now, not everybody wants to make everything. I mean, here's an example. Everybody can cook food, whether it's making a gourmet meal or making a bowl of cereal. But there's a reason why there are people who go to restaurants, because sometimes it's just nicer to pay somebody else to do it for you. But you can find plenty of books on how to cook the very same things you go out for. You get it for the convenience. But here's the thing. If you look at even my org, my organic products, I talk about I have I sell organic soaps, organic deodorants, organic um, lip balms, a whole bunch of different things. And again, I have videos and you can go to my main channel and type in organic products and you will see instructional videos and I teach you how to make them yourselves. This is what the world needs to do. And that's why one of my heroes, especially lately, is Nikolai Tesla. Because he, and now keep in mind, this was back in the mid to late 1800s. He either invented or rediscovered old technology that has to do with wireless capability, where people, instead of having copper wires that clutter all neighborhoods, and every time there's a storm, a tree will knock it down, and all of a sudden you'll lose your power, and they could put a meter on your house, and they regulate how much you get and charge you accordingly, it would have been free to the world. He offered this, and the thanks we got as human beings is they basically discredited him, humiliated him, and he died a broken man, both monetarily and spiritually. And just imagine where we would be, technologically speaking, if back in the mid to late 1800s, we didn't have to pay for heat, for electricity, because how many people go their lives where they make so little money because the, the, everything nowadays is stealing every amount of money they can from you through fear 
or through entertainment, and they get you to spend all your money on things like an iPhone 6, where people will stand in line for hours or days to buy a phone for $600 that you could almost bend in half. We have to get to the point where people like Nikolai Tesla have to be the hero. And they wanted, he wanted to help humankind. Just imagine where we would be technologically if all of his inventions were allowed to get into the world. And we didn't have to pay for electricity. And there were no wires all over the place. All that money they spent on poles and cutting down trees because that's what those poles are. They're made of trees. And last time I checked, we get our oxygen from trees and we keep cutting them down. Just imagine how many millions of trees would not have to have been cut down to make those poles and how much of that copper could have been used for something more beneficial. Where we would be technologically speaking in this world. And it's just amazing that people like that are forgotten in history. And somebody like Thomas Edison, who was basically the one that was responsible for humiliating Nikolai Tesla and created the DC current because the powers that be who owned all the copper mines could profit off of people and spend your whole life charging for this very free gift that Nikolai Tesla was ready to give us because he realized that you can extract lightning and energy out of the atmosphere and send it wirelessly throughout the world. There are reasons why there are no cures for diseases, because if when people understand what's going on, when you want to borrow money for a grant, let's say you want to try and figure the cure for cancer and you need the money to be able to finance your ability to buy the materials and the, the research it will take to do this. Now, you're not going to go up to a government facility and say, yes, um, I need a quarter of a million dollars for research. I want to try and get the cure for cancer, and I need the money uh, grant to get this money. So I need about a quarter of a million dollars. They don't turn around and say, oh, you need a quarter of a million? Yeah, sure, no problem. Hold on a second. Here you go, quarter of a million dollars. Have a nice day. Good luck with your research. No, you have to sign a lot of stuff, which I guarantee you, you're not bringing a lawyer to, and they're not going to explain all the things that you're signing away. When you get a grant from the government to be able to do your own research, basically they are telling you in a nutshell, they own whatever you discover. So in other words, let's say you got that 250000 and you ended up going and researching cancer, and you find the cure for cancer. You can't just make a video on YouTube and just give it out freely to everybody. You have to report back to the very people who gave you the financing. And you have to submit their, that information. And what they'll do is they'll turn around and say, oh, well, this is great stuff. Let's look into it. And they'll either discredit you or they'll make it disappear or they'll turn around and say, oh, well, you know, we did some research on our own and we found that your conclusions actually were not as accurate as you actually thought. In other words, they're always going for the research because it continually steals money from the people. Because where do you think that money comes from ultimately? It comes from our pockets that we somehow willingly give them. And you ever notice that most research when it comes to things like diseases always happen from scientists in schools? Well, they get funded. And as long as they continue to do research, they keep getting government grants that keep their colleges and universities alive. So yes, when you see all these, like the ice bucket challenge, where they say, oh, well, yeah, we're going to donate all this money to ALS. Well, first of all, they make you think that all of the money that's being donated is actually 100% going towards research and curing the disease. No, only a small percentage of that actually goes to research. The rest of it goes to either corrupt politicians that pocket some of the money or the pharmaceutical companies that, again, pocket the money. The CEOs not trickling down to all the employees who could really use that money. But the wealthy people, the wealthiest people, are the ones that get even more of our money. And but what happens is these schools are dependent on these funds from the government to be able to survive in these universities. So they don't want a cure. Why do you think you see so many people that have actually come out and said, I have discovered certain cures for certain diseases and I submitted it to schools and they won't touch it. They won't acknowledge it because then they know they will lose their funding. There is no profit in a cure, but they will tell you for thousands of years that, oh, we'll search it, we'll investigate it, we'll research it. I mean, how many banks like HSBC that were caught, they were caught red-handed with drug money, smuggling money through their banking system. And they got a slap on the wrist and a fee of what, maybe 10% of what they stole? They had to pay in fines? Just imagine if you robbed a bank, you robbed a million dollars from the bank, 
they catch you and say, all right, just give us $5,000 and you won't go to jail and you get to keep the rest of the money. You'd rob banks for a living for the rest of your life after that. But yet, how many people are having an outrage and taking their money out of HSBC? What about a year and a half ago to two years ago when the Vatican actually got shut down for, again, laundering drug money? And they actually stopped the credit cards at the Vatican because they were using the credit cards for a drug laundering money scheme. They keep taking our money and we keep giving it to them. And we don't understand that we're so busy trying to look outside of ourselves for information. And like, if you're depressed or angry or frustrated, you're always asking for advice somewhere else, paying for psychologists, psychiatrists, getting medicines. What about our the doomer and gloomer style people? I mean, I was one of those people in the beginning. I used to watch Alex Jones when I first started back in 2011. That's why I was so paranoid and everything back then. It scares you especially when you don't know what's going on and you spend your whole life instead of believing in yourself, you start listening to these people. And then you start buying gas masks and water tablets and storing up food and water and getting guns and all these other things, which some of it's good. I mean, if you're stocking up on toilet paper, food and water, I mean, considering how much prices are getting higher and higher and how products are getting sh shrinking and sh shrinking more and more, well, yeah, you're saving money. And if you buy to extra toilet paper, I mean, it's not going to expire. So it's good for you and you save money. But like the gas tab, um, the gas masks and the uh, radioactive pills and all this stuff, there's plenty of people willing to take advantage of people and sell them this stuff. And let's hope you never have to use it. But they'll always use that doom and gloom, scaring the living daylights out of you with their fear porn. But we are responsible for it because we allow it. We give them all of our hard-earned fiat currency. And we go from living to surviving. And how many people in this world, and I've been through this, where in the winter time, and I live in New York, and it gets pretty cold here, especially recently, where how many people have actually had to have their winters where they had to make a choice? They made just enough money to pay their rent, pay their bills, and they had just enough money to either A, buy food, or B, by heat. What do you think they're going to pick? And how many people had to go to bed freezing because they didn't have the ability to be able to buy the necessities of life like warmth? And we in the governments throughout the world talk about how we have to go bomb ISIS and bomb all these other people and take their resources. And yet cities like Detroit go bankrupt and they spend billions, if not trillions of our tax dollars to arm other people in other countries who eventually end up being our enemies. Because if you look at the reason why we did not fight in Syria last year, and now we're starting to bomb them again now, the reason it didn't happen last year is because we realized the people that we were supposedly financing to save the day were a, uh, a faction of Al-Qaeda. And people were pissed at that. You're going to finance the very people you said were responsible for 9-11? But there'll always be another fear. There will always be another person ready to sell you their DVD or promote their fear porn. And you have to pay for that privilege. And yes, like I said, it's easier for me to buy this shirt than to try and make one myself and get the materials and learn how to do it. But no one's going to say, oh, well, if you don't buy our shirt, your, your body's going to explode. You need to buy our shirt now. Otherwise, you're going to die. No. And that's why with my organic and organ products, the things that I sell, there's no fear behind it. And I, I make videos teaching people how to make it themselves. It's just some people may not want to make things themselves. It may actually be more cost efficient to actually buy something from someone else than to actually spend the time it takes to make it. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to keep messing up and then you're going to ruin it and you're going to spend more and more money. I mean, my Oregon pyramids, it took me a year and a half to perfect them. Let me show you something. This, this pyramid mold, this cost me $60. The smaller ones cost me an average of about $30 a piece. Do you know how many of those had the molds get stuck in them and I could never get them out because I did it improperly in the beginning when I didn't really know what I was doing and I had to throw them out? So there's sometimes it's a matter of convenience. So I understand that. But look at the difference between the Great Depression and now. 
Because in the Great Depression, people, they didn't end up um, having to go to supermarkets to buy food. Yeah, there were local stores, but they grew most of their own food. They had goats and cows so they could get their own milk and be able to make their own cheese. They ended up, they had the ability to make their own clothes, make their own blankets. They didn't need uh, building permits to make a house. And pay off all these politicians and all these inspectors that are looking for a handout because of all the new regulations. They just built houses. I mean, please, before the Federal Reserve opened in 1913, there was zero sales tax when it came to your work. They didn't take taxes out of your paycheck. You took 100% of what you earned home. And it's all about thievery. But we allow it. And we go outside of ourselves to look at other people for advice for information, for truth. And that's why in religion, they'll always say, well, if you're in, pro in jeopardy, don't search within yourself, even though basically in religion, they tell you that God is within you and search within. They, they said, get on your knees and pray. In other words, pray to your God and they'll come and save you, whoever that God is. And in government, they're always telling you, well, if you don't like the way this corrupt politician is going, well, vote in another one. And we keep falling for the same thing over and over again. And it steals our wealth. While they get richer, we get poorer. And they make us fight each other. And that's one of the things these trolls and these haters that make these accusations will never understand. We're all fellow humans. If you know anything about even the, the story of religion, we all created from one source, which means we're all brothers and sisters. So when you hurt one man or one woman, you're hurting everyone, including yourself. I don't understand how people can do stuff like this, making these accusations and lies or killing animals or, or hurting other people or raping women or beating old people. Really? Is your life that pathetic? You have to trust yourself. When you're depressed, instead of spending money to go to psychologists, and I mean, some people may need that. There are some people out there that really need it. Like some of my trolls, they need, there's a reason why governments make medications. There are some people that should be on them. But, the average person who can actually have the ability to just sit down and reason and figure out what's wrong and look inside themselves, they can solve anything. But instead, we spend money on other people thinking they know us better than we are. We know ourselves. How does some psychiatrist know you better than you know yourself? And again, there's always a need. There are certain people that do need that help. But there are so many people that are so quick to have everybody else do something for them instead of looking within themselves and believing in themselves and trusting themselves. It's almost meant to be strange. My truth is different than your truth. Your truth is different than everybody else's truth. But that doesn't mean it's not truth. Believe in yourself. Trust your instincts. Stop always going elsewhere for information. It's nothing wrong with listening to things, but don't base your life on what other people tell you to do or tell you not what not to do. I listen to a bunch of different people, but that doesn't mean I take everything that they say to heart. I listen to it. I find what I can take out of it that resonates with me, and then I utilize it for my benefit. But that doesn't mean they're liars and I hate them. I mean, even Alex Jones. I don't make videos that specifically trash him. I don't go and troll his channel. And I can't stand the person. I don't appreciate the fact that he uses fear porn on a constant daily basis to scare the living daylights out of you and then sells all these wonderful products. Doesn't teach you how to make a water purifier, but he'll sure sell you one and he'll make profit off of it. But he'll scare you to death and think, oh, if you don't have this water purifier, you're going to die. Or if you don't have these radioactive treatment pills, you're going to potentially die from radioactive Fukushima poisoning. Now, can that happen? Absolutely. Does that mean everybody's going to drop dead tomorrow? I sure hope not. But if you look throughout history, we're still here. Despite nuclear bombs being dropped and wars throughout the millennia and diseases that wiped out a mass amount of quantities of people, we're still here. There's a reason for that. I want to thank people that watched this far. I want to let people know that I am always going to be here for them. And I'm always going to speak my truth. Now, that may not resonate with you, but that's okay. Just like not everybody's going to resonate with what you believe in. It's nothing more than your own experience. It's your own amusement park. 
And like this troll that was trying to make these stupid accusations about me earlier, that's like them talking about how I built my amusement park, like they know. And saying, oh yeah, he paid off all these politicians to make that amusement park, and it's really corrupt, and it's really this. Okay, anybody can make an accusation, but if that's the way you want to spend your life, by being a liar, promoting hate, making false accusations, for what gain? What, so somebody could pay attention to you? I mean, is your life that sad, that desperate? You need that much of attention? That's why I posted the link on that other channel. If that guy wants the attention so desperately, let him have it. But that's the only way you can ever get attention. Otherwise, no one would even know he exists. That's a hell of a way to live life. The only way somebody can look at somebody else is by attacking another person, a fellow human being. Boy, you must be, your parents must be proud. Don't be one of those people. Be better than that. Rise above. Look within yourself. And take some of your hard-earned fiat currency instead of wasting it on a $600 bendable iPhone. How about do something that makes you happy or use that money for good? Because trust me, I'm not a millionaire and I'm glad I'm not. But if I won the lottery tomorrow, probably 60 to 70 to 80 percent of that money I'd be giving away to my mother, my sister, my family people I care about. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give. You're supposed to help. You're supposed to love and care. I couldn't sit there if I won, let's say the lottery was $30 million and I won $30 million. I wouldn't sit there and say, oh, mine, mine, mine. No one can have it. And that's what all these elitist people do. They all want to be like, oh, I'm the most wealthiest person in the world. Oh, no, today I'm the most wealthiest person in the world. The Rothschilds have enough money to feed the entire planet. But yet they keep it to themselves so they can control people because they're begging for food and water and the basic necessities of keeping warm at night so they can have a couple extra billion dollars in their pocket that they do nothing productive with. That's a legacy? People look up to that? They're proud of this? I'm glad I'm not them. I never would be. Because if that's what it took, no thank you. Maybe that's why I'm not that way, because I'm not willing to step over my fellow man and hurt my fellow humans for my own self-gain. I make enough to get by, but that's why I don't have a bank account anymore. That's why I make my own organic soaps and shampoos and deodorants and lip balms and toothpaste and things. So I'm not buying the chemical garbage that they try and throw down our throats. But again, they don't put a gun to your head. You want to eat a genetically modified piece of garbage food. Just keep in mind, when they put the toxins in there, they're not made for you to bite into it and drop dead, although some people have had that happen with allergic reactions, because when you're young, they want to suck out all of your youth, your ability to be able to work so they can play golf. And that's why when you get older, when you're no longer able to function, that's when you get the tumors, the cancers, the ulcers, the back problems, the bone problems, the spinal problems, the muscle problems, the arthritis. Because then you're no longer useful. What do they care? They've already gotten everything out of you that they can. But we allow it. Question is why? And then people like me and others that want to speak this truth and help people, we want, we're going to get attacked and made fun of and lied about because they don't believe in what we say? Okay, you don't believe it, move on. I can't stand Alex Jones. I don't remember the last time I watched one of his videos. I don't care. I don't go to his channel to troll it. I got better things to do with my free time. And that's helping you guys and caring. I love this. That's what motivates me. Like I said, you know, these trolls don't seem to understand that sometimes I get so, I lose the passion for it. I just want to walk away and say, you know, I've said everything that I could say. And if they just shut up and walked away, I would actually get bored maybe at some point and I would have gave up years ago. But they keep motivating me for some reason. So I, that's what the experience I take out of it. And yeah, if somebody wants to say some childish thing, like a 12-year-old would say, oh, you're gay. Okay, if people want to believe that, that's fine with them. I'm not going to sit here and try and convince some moron of what I have and what I don't have and what I am and what I am not. And not for nothing, if somebody's gay, what's wrong with that anyway? And the person said, oh, don't believe the person because I'm supposedly gay. So what he's saying is, if you're gay, you're a liar? Really? So I could just imagine anybody in the gay community, how offended they would be by somebody making a statement like that. Oh, don't trust this person because he's gay. 
It's it's just so juvenile. But, you know, to each their own, if this is what the person does because they desperate need of attention, perfectly fine. That's the life they want to achieve. And that's why people email me all the time thanking me. And somebody like that will have nothing but trolls thumbing up his video so they could share their bar none hatred. You know how rewarding it is over the years of the constant emails and comments that I get from people thanking me for what I've done and how I've inspired them. You know how many people have emailed me over the years saying, Chris, I was ready to end it all. I was ready to commit suicide. And I came across one of your videos or several of your videos. And not only did I stop from killing myself, it motivated me to become a better person. And I have you to thank for it. That's incredible. And that's why, like I say, I, I know I don't get thousands of people watching my videos. And I know probably 10 to 15% of the people who actually do watch are these trolls and haters that have nothing better to do with their free time than to stalk somebody that they say they don't like. They don't like me, but yet they can't stop talking about me. But yet they'll never feel that joy of knowing they helped some stranger to better themselves or to at the very least not end their lives. Because that's just another human loss that we don't need. And we're so worried about fear and the fear porn and these terrorists and these outside things that will never end up stopping because they will always continue these problems. And we keep believing it. We keep falling for the same trap. We keep consenting to their lies. And they steal from us every single way possible, either through taxation or the reduction of the food. Because you see boxes of cereal and things are getting smaller and smaller. I mean, look at a thing of ice cream. When was the last time you bought a gallon of ice cream? They don't sell it by the gallon anymore. It's by the quart. But yet it's the same price, if not more, than what a gallon used to be. So they may even keep it the same price, but they take less and less of the product away. I mean, I remember when cereal boxes were, you know, like this. Now. They're like this. Look at candy bars. I mean, the ones that now they're calling supersized were regular ones when I was a kid. Now you're buying a candy bar, it's like this big. And you're spending, what, $1.50 up to $2 for it? They steal from you in every way. They just don't always just take it directly out of your pocket. But there's always a way that they do it. And we allow it. I hope that changes someday. So for those of you who watch this to the end, I thank you so much because obviously if you watch this whole video, you're one of the people that cares. And if my words can motivate you or inspire you or get you to do something good for someone else, then I've achieved a goal. And if more people did that and they lost the fear and actually decided today is the day I'm going to be good and care about my fellow human beings, just imagine the wave of goodness that can create. Or we can continue doing the same thing over and over again for thousands of years and wonder why we're not getting anywhere better as a species. If that's the case, maybe we do need to be destroyed. We can't experience love. We can't help each other. We definitely don't unite. What's our purpose then? To have a bunch of individual people to say, as long as I get mine, to hell with what happens to someone else, and I'm willing to succeed by stepping on over, over the people either I know or don't know? Or, yeah, you know, we want to kill a bunch of people so we can justify having enough people to be on our side through patriotism so we can go kill a bunch of people overseas that you'll never see what we're doing and just extract all their resources. As long as you don't see it, you're okay with it. That's a sad thing to think about as fellow human beings. That more people are con concerned about videotaping somebody being beaten up on their phone so they can get the most views on YouTube than actually putting the phone down and helping that person. I hope that changes. And if I hope one person to change it, then that's going in the right direction. And that's the best I can do. And it's my truth. And if you don't like it, make your own. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Chris, a.k.a. Barn on 11970 saying th give this thumbs up if you appreciate it. Share it on your social networks, and if you're not part of the Barn on Nation, hit the, the subscribe button somewhere below, and don't forget to have your lying trolls spayed or neutered. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your night. Peace.